No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world, and I'm in here with the one and only Tay hey, Money. Money. How you doing? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm very excited because like you're somebody who had an exposed interview uh, back like six months ago, maybe, and we never actually got to do a real podcast. So mm-hmm. I'm like, glad to be here. Yeah, me yeah. too. How you uh how you doing? What's what's going on in your life? I, I don't want to just like be like, yo, so tell me about your childhood. Um <laughs> so, <laughs> so I just dropped a project. It's called Hurricane Tay. Oh nice. Um 16 songs on it. And I'm glad because I've been holding that music for a while. I really just want to put something out. Um now I'm ready to just keep putting out. We're gonna drop something top of the year. I'm gonna say January, February. Okay. Um, some brand new Tay Money. My, uh, tell me if I'm wrong. Like, I have assumptions about you. Obviously, you see somebody in the media. You assume what they like or whatever. You seem like just such a pure down south oh, Texas way. woman. <laughs> like a just like a very nice Southern belle, charm, charming, oozing just random conversations about the weather. And yeah, I actually don't meet a stranger, and like I like. Uh, I know that, like, other artists follow, like, big famous people and stuff like that. But, like, I follow my fans. Like, I follow real people. I'd rather see pictures of your dog. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I am like that. And I do think that makes me different. And that shout out to my mama for that. It's a very Texas thing as well. Like, I, I've, I've always kind of lived on the East Coast. Like, well, previously, like, I lived, like, where I grew up in New Hampshire. And I lived in New York for a long time. And then I would go down to Texas and just be, like, floored by how friendly everybody was. We in terms of just the way that it's normal to make a conversation with a stranger. It is. We we literally, if you like someone's hair, you say it. You know, we pet everyone's dogs. Like, uh the food goes crazy in Texas. Like, oh, oh there's no place better. Like, I'm like, every time I travel, I'm like, damn. No, I support that. It's because there, there's just no, it, like, Hollywood is like a culture of health and, like, taking care of yourself and doing yoga and eating salads. And Texas is like, no, we'll just throw a <laughs> stick of butter in there. So it's like. So that's new to me. When I come <laughs> out here, everything, yeah, everything's green. And I think it's great, but I actually don't have the taste buds for that at all. Right. What are your favorite foods? I love fried chicken, fried mm. chicken sandwiches. I, when I'm like eating whatever, when I'm stopping with the salads, it's it's all fried chicken. Really? I mean, a big part of it. I recently just started eating salad, and I freaking love it. There's this place called Bread Zeppelin. If you out here, uh, Texas. Oh, okay. Yeah, Bread but it's Zeppelin. like crazy. It's crazy. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I I feel like uh, that that's a big <laughs> part of it. Like the down south vibe is just very like homey. It's very like we're we're gonna support you. We're gonna be nice to you. We're gonna take care of you just because you're here. And it's partially because like the population is like spread out. It's like not as many people, so right. it kind of seems like you should be kinder to your neighbor as opposed to like Hollywood or New York where it's just so cutthroat. Like when you think about other people, you're thinking about being on the subway crammed in there with hundreds of other yeah. people. The the thought of a subway like it kind of like. I want to go on one, but um, I really haven't experienced things like that yet. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Mm, so I talk talk about like how you got here today. What were you like as a kid, or what 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 was what's the origin story of Tay Money within the rapper so universe? I actually did grow up on um, a farm, a ranch. I don't know what exactly you would clarify it as because we didn't actually sell uh, like milk or eggs or anything like that. But like we probably had like fifty cattle uh, when when. Me and my sister were born. My dad each gave us a cow, a calf, and you ra- you feed it. We didn't actually feed it, but he would feed it and get it real big, and then he, we would auction it off. He'd put that money in a, a fund for us, and that's how we got to college. Right? How, did, did we you, was flipping cows. Were you sad as a kid, though, like, like the cow has to go away? Is it hard to explain that to a kid? Yes, and also hunting is a big thing in Texas, and right. I would like beg my daddy. I'd be like, please don't kill him, please don't <laughs> I think some crazy stuff like they hang it up by their feet and do some, and it's still twitching and like. But then, did you eventually learn to accept and respect hunting, or did you never get over that? Uh, I'm not a crybaby, but like I just turn my head. Right. Yeah. See that that is a weird thing that you see play on in social media constantly, where you'll see a dude who's like out hunting, and it's this is legal, this is like normal in a lot of parts of the country or, or the earth, or like just people hunting fucking deer or whatever. And then you have other people who can't imagine doing that in a million years, commenting and being like, "How fucking dare you do that?" Acting like people are the spawn of Satan for hunting. I am a huge animal lover. If you go to my explore page. It's like just baby animals all over it. Wow, I wish I had that. Mine's all Instagram (laughs) models and fucking BMX bikers. 
Find some nails and some animals in there. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, That's interesting. They I, know what you want. I started um, playing basketball in sixth grade, and that's when I was really introduced to more of like an urban lifestyle. Okay. Because I was kind of, you know, out in the ranch. Um, once I started playing sports, um, I'm, I was very athletic. I even played a year of college softball. Um, but after I got into music and stuff like that, I never imagined I would be doing it. If you would tell me that, I knew I loved music, but I didn't think I would ever do it. Right. Were you When you went to school, was it like a very small school because you grew up in a, presumably like a not so populated area? So there was 10,000 people in our city, our town. Oh boy. Uh, it's called Athens. It's about an hour and a half out of Dallas. And uh, we would drop to Dallas for the malls and stuff like that. Because um, we, as people who go to Texas, go to Houston, go to Dallas, go to Austin, and you think that's Texas. But the reality is, is that 95% of Texas is like farmland type. It area, is, right? but it's beautiful. There's mm-hmm. even uh, some hills in South Texas that look like California hills. It's really? insane. Uh, I even actually saw that like this past year and was like, I had no idea. It's called the hill country, oh, wow. but it's beautiful. Um, there's rivers. We get on tubes and we float down that. That's just a regular day down in Texas. Uh, in San Marcos. Oh, yeah. Uh, San Marcos. Yeah. There. San Marcos, San Marcos. Is that, that's the same thing like right yeah. outside Austin. Yeah. So okay. there's, they're like three mile long rivers Yeah. and you buy a tube and you buy a tube for your cooler and you all tie together and float down it. Wow. It's crazy. That's a lifestyle. Actually, last time we went down it, we got so drunk. <laughs> That we had to get out and finish walking it. Really? <laughs> you were too drunk to continue to, to, to float. S- just to sit on a raft? <laughs> that's drunk. That's drunk. Wow, that's hilarious. Okay, so then you start going to school. Like, were you exposed to rap on the ranch or did that not really on come the to ra- play? Rap on the ranch? I mean, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> did you have a radio? Uh, yeah. My sister had the CD player, it was green. And I would steal it at night and listen to it. And I heard Jaquan tipsy for my first time ever. And I was like, wow, that's so Raven. That's life. the kind of song that will make you fall in love with rap music. Yeah, I love it. Just hitting you over the head. When I go to the studio now, they're like, what type of music do you like? Jay I'm like, Kwan. can you make a, a tipsy beat? Yeah. 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 That's real. You really say that? Sometimes I do. I actually have the Jaquan tipsy vinyl. Wow. Yeah, I love it. That's amazing. I was actually watching this like VH1 thing about Jaquan and like what happened to his life. And shit. What happened to him? Not much. I don't know. Honestly, oh, I don't even remember. So poor probably poor not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Jaquan, man. We love you, Jaquan. It was hard to be a rapper back then, though, because you'd have your big hit, and then like the label really didn't give a fuck about you unless you continued to just make big hits, which, as I say that, it sounds almost exactly like the music industry now, I but say. it's kind of <laughs> like, I agree. it was tough back then. Everything back then was crazy, I feel like. That's my favorite era, so I still listen to that music, mm. like... Uh, like Ashanti and Ja Rule, J Lo, like that's what's pretty much on my phone. That's a great era. It's the best. You know, music videos and stuff back then is like they don't make them like that. They don't make the songs like that. Like who the hell was writing them? You know uh, what I'm saying? Well, nowadays, like the whole concept of making a video is so easy. I like yeah. music videos when it costs like a million dollars and it was just like a huge pain in the ass and it might not even come out right. Right. That was awesome. Yeah. Does it bother you at all that earlier when I was describing to somebody, I said she's like a cute little Paul Wall? No, I love that. I, people are like, <laughs> people, I'm like, I tell people Paul Wall's my uncle. That's really? My uncle. He's not. Have you met him? No. Okay. Uh, but He follows me on Instagram. I could probably put on a good word. Paul Wall. Paul Wall. Reach out. Damn, please. Uh, he used to work with this artist. He might still. I don't know. So he was, Paul Wall's from Houston. And Big Tuck is from Dallas. Love Big Tuck. He's my favorite rapper. Southside the Realist. Yes, always. Um, Who say that we ain't dro- dope dealing wizards? Paul changing color like, like chameleon, chameleon lizards. lizards. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, Tay Money, I have a song, Tay Money, by Tay Money. And it is a, a tribute a remake of his song, Not a Stain on Me. Oh, that's another great one, yeah. Yeah. Um, I got into Big Tuck because somebody told me when I was really into Riff Raff, they said, this dude just stole Big Tuck's flow. So I went and listened to it. I'm like, damn, there's a little truth to that. But I think Riff Raff has acknowledged that, and they, I think they did music together and stuff. That's good. Uh, I love the way that Riff Raff and Big Tuck talk, the way they describe things. Like, he's not going to say, hey, that blue car. He's going to say that aqua berry. Or mm-hmm. uh, there's this Tuck line. He'd say, when my car parked, it's an arcade. Mm. Like, that shit... They're not saying shit like that no more, you know? Oh, yeah. I just love, like, anyone who's just inventive with their lyrics. Earlier, I was telling somebody that one of my favorite rap lyrics of all time is Cameron when he says, 
since the movie Cocoon had my Uzi platoon, which is a really complicated way of saying I've had a lot of guys with guns around me for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. There's one time I seen you on um, Melrose, and you, I heard you came up on you, you were talking, you were like, I don't know, Gucci wouldn't been to Sicily when he wrote those lyrics. What, <laughs> what was it? You know what I'm talking about? Well, it's true, because he's like, he's like, uh, He's talking about how it used to be I could just take a bitch to Wendy's, but now these hoes all want to go to Sicily. Sicily. <laughs> but this motherfucker's lying because he never even left the country until like a year ago. Really? Yeah, because he was always on crazy ass papers and he couldn't leave. And then finally he got off probation like very recently. Because I remember I, I fucking took all the pictures and put it on the No Jumper Twitter and just said, Gucci finally left the country, blah, blah, blah. And we got like 100,000 retweets and Gucci retweeted it and I was hyped. That's lit. As a social media Gucci guy, man. that's the kind of thing that we live for. Right. <laughs> making making viral content out of somebody getting off probation. No, yeah, but that's real. That, hey, you got to like, uh, in today's headlines, like, you got to be, a, you got to be problematic. It's all about framing. But you haven't had that, actually. I, I tried to Google Tay Money Fight and Tay Money Beef. Nothing. These hoes going to hate, though. I'm sure they do. <laughs> but, I mean, when you think about, like, the female rap world i thought about it they all be beefed up they all be fighting they all be in some type of shit like it's interesting you managed to stay away from that mm -mm, i don't i don't play that shit right. i don't i really like have no reason to do anybody wrong and if i i have i can sense you like if i even feel like you finna do me wrong i out and pick up my phone you seem so well adjusted you seem like such a nice person that it's almost kind of hard to imagine why you would want to become a rapper <laughs> <laughs> so uh that's that's I don't know. I, uh, <laughs> Not that that I, is required. I, I can't lie to you. Sometimes I'm like, damn, what am I doing? Well, I've signed up for a lot here. I, basically, I've signed up for a lot. Like, do I need to get in a fight? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy to stay relevant. And I'm like, I'm not I'm not going to reach to those levels. Like, mm. they just going to have to fuck with me. They're going to see. They are, Some people already have their mind made up. And I can see it when I walk on a stage. They look at me like, who? Mm. Like, is she for real? Is she real? Like... If you would just open your ears or even just get to know me or even watch anything, uh, I feel like you would like me. It's not, being, it's not easy being new. It's not. But it's also fun being new. Cause mm. I... Yeah. <laughs> no, but, okay. <laughs> it's nice to be new because all of a sudden people get their first chance to really think about you and consume your music or think about you at all. But then also it's like, even just convincing people that you should take me seriously as a rapper at all is a, fucking tiring. It's a it's a tough thing a lot of times because people are so inundated with rappers that they just almost don't want to even consider the idea of knowing about another rapper. Basically, and at this point, everyone is starting to rap. So it's like I used to listen when I seen a video on my time. Mm. I would stop and at least hear a little bit. I'm scrolling. Oh, yeah. I'm scrolling. I know, and I think about how bad that is, that it's just like, why, why do I not even like give That's a same. new video from an artist I like enough to follow? I don't right. even give them 30 seconds of my time here. Where are you from? Outside Boston. Okay. I like your, I like your hair. New Hampshire. My hair. What hair? But, but you didn't used to have hair. Yeah, yeah. yeah and now you on got it. it. So I, I like you with hair. Yeah, people are shocked. They're like, wow, like, why did you not have hair all those years? I'm like, I, I had a razor and I shaved it. <laughs> That's back, and it's not that great, but it's a little bit going on under here. I'm working on it. I feel like once it's longer, it'll look better. I want a hat. You want a hat? Oh, yeah, yeah this is a no jumper hat, huh? Well, available at nojumper.com. There you go. See. Boom. We got white ones, I assume, Merry as Christmas well. Camp. No, no white because you know makeup. No, that's a really good point. I, that's one a weird thing you realize as a guy. I remember when I was like 17, and I went and gave this girl a hug, and then she, oh. she went away, and my friend just looked at my shirt, and he just goes, Looks like a misfit shirt. Honestly, if she was like skull shape. Um dead. <laughs> but it's true. If she had any manners, she would know I literally hug like this. Right. You actually did that to me when I first walked in. Yeah. And if I see something on them, I'm like, oh shit, run. <laughs> Scrub it off real quick. Guys don't know how much work women put in on that. Y'all don't. I was looking uh in my bathroom today at the bag of cosmetic trees. Whatever the fuck word is. It was so much shit. And then, uh, like, when I see um, Cole's bag, it's got, like, 
a little <laughs> shave, a little razor, a little toothbrush. A little... There's like six things in his bag. I literally have over 200 things. I might have a beat. I think I got about four. Oh. <laughs> Stick of deodorant, toothbrush, toothpaste. Like when I go on the road, floss. Floss. I don't really need a razor if I'm not going to be gone for like a couple weeks. That's true. Girls need a razor. Yeah. Now there's a lot of... Do you ever think about that? Do you ever think like, damn, what did I sign up for? Maybe I should just move to Portland and just work in a coffee shop. No. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we've already, I already got, so I used to do hair. Yes. Um, so you already attempted a normal life before the rap dream set in. Yeah. And it was actually a, a pretty damn good life. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I may, I want to start this thing. Um, I'm going to start this thing where once a month you could get your hair done by pay money. Wow. Uh, and. Maybe do some other artists and we'll record it, and make a vlog out of it. You know, anything to make a quick buck. But, With your uh, fans, yeah, for sure. That would be that would be a cool thing for the fans. And um, I wouldn't actually mind keeping that. I keep my license updated. I never let it expire because my job actually was a good job. It made me feel good to make other people feel good. Right. And these little old ladies, like, not fans, but like, you know, they're like 50, 60 years old, and they. There's not much to look forward to. You know what I'm saying? Like, you've lived your life. Right. And so you want to make them feel as good as they can. I love that shit. No, I could imagine that would be pretty pretty good. Like, in terms of a regular job, just being able to have, like, a good, healthy hour or so, whatever it is, to talk to that person and sort of just make small talk and stuff. That's got to be pretty yeah. fulfilling. I would ask them, like, uh, three questions. Uh, because you're supposed to some either come to talk or some come to relax. So right. So I ask them, like, three questions, see how they're feeling. I would ask them, hey, like, are you happy? With your life. Right. And like you would be surprised what you heard. Weirdly deep. Yeah, because I mean there's two different reactions. It's either like, oh, let me just unleash on you and tell you everything I think about <laughs> life, or like, what? Like <laughs> no. Because like for, to be honest, like the average person cut my hair, I don't know, if it's tame money, I might start a conversation. But for the average person, if they tried to start a conversation with me, I'm gonna get my hair cut. No, but I, my last barber I used to always go to. I would always talk you to talk him. To but him, I thought right. he was cool. Yeah. yeah. But I could imagine if I didn't think he was cool, I would have just not. You wouldn't really, go to him. Yeah. Well, I would have gone to him, but I wouldn't have talked to him. I had a few ladies fall, actually fall asleep while I was doing that. It was like... Oh, really? Yeah, that was crazy. I get massages from a guy that I don't like to talk to. I wouldn't talk to him either. <laughs> I just... No, I mean, like... He just... He's always saying some crazy ass shit that I just don't want to talk about. I always get awkward when I go into my massages. Yeah. I'm like, I don't talk at all. I got like a Joe Rogan podcast on like volume level 40 when he walks <laughs> in so that he knows he's not supposed to be talking. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very non-Texas type thing of me. Yeah. So okay, you're you're. Did, did you try to go to college at all? Yeah, I. Oh, uh, well, I, you have to for the hair thing, huh? Yeah. So, but uh, straight out of high school, I went to a JUCO and played softball. JUCO. Uh, junior college. Oh okay. And uh, <laughs> I'm like, like ju- sorry. <laughs> I, uh, I played it, and I dropped out so fast after that year. So I only went because I wanted to ke- continue playing softball. Mm. Um, and what then, position did you play? So I was a closer for a pitcher, and I was either short or center. Interesting. And um, what were you talking about? Softball. <laughs> no, softball. I mean, that's just, that's interesting. What made you want to get out of it? Oh, because all, like high school was, of course, the best time to play. But I started when I was like, my dad had me out when I was like three or four. Right. Um, But when I got to college, it just wasn't fun. Like they sucked all the fun out of it. Like, what, they're making you train hours and hours a day? You thought I was like in the Navy or oh, something. Oh, my God. It was ridiculous. I had a whole six pack. Like I was like. Wow, really? Yeah, it's gone now. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I dropped out after a year. I went straight to beauty school, and I finished it in a year. And then I was renting a booth in Athens. And just I was actually making out? pretty damn good money at that age. I bet, yeah. If you go hard, if you work like yeah, a lot right. of hours. And uh, so word travels by mouth there. So, you know, in Athens, not many good hairdressers. Right. And so, but were you thinking at that time in your life, did you have a bigger vision for what you wanted to do with yourself? Or were you pretty happy with just like, I can, I can do this for the rest of my life in a small town? No, uh, I didn't know what I would do or even what I wanted to do, but this is going to sound lame. It's not lame, but I could literally feel inside of me that I was just different or maybe I was just chosen or I was just supposed to help people or speak for people, um, and then I came to Dallas and got introduced to, you know, people were making music. I only knew one other person that made music in Athens. Uh-huh. I would be too nervous to get on the mic in front of them. Uh, I came to Dallas. I'm like, this is like a thing. There were there were musicians everywhere. Right. Uh, and I asked a friend. He said, I can get you started. And I started in a closet. And 
I'm now I'm here with you. Wow, that's great. So was it the kind of thing where you just didn't really know enough? Like, you know, because if you grow up in Dallas or Houston or L.A., chances are you're going to be exposed to people who know enough about making music that it's not going to seem totally foreign, but you're from like more of a small town, so you're not really even thinking of that as a possibility to get into expressing yourself like that? I don't know how it started or why it even started, um, but I would freestyle in my car. So in Athens, what we did listen to was Webby, Boosie, Big Tug, mm. um, Paul Wall, stuff like that. Um, and that's what I knew, and so that's how I freestyle. Mm. And then my friends like, you know, you, they would tell me, you're good, you're good. But I would literally, if you asked me to freestyle in front of you then, I would like sweat. Like I would like freak out. Like I would like choke on my words. Mm. Um but you could do it in front of your friends. Yeah. And then I was like, how will I ever, I could never do this, but like, I would love to do this. Then I remember um, one of the shows I went to in Dallas, there was a girl there. Her name was Trap Mama. She yeah. still, she still makes music. Yeah. I think I've seen her. And uh, I seen her on stage and she had these big old long pigtails and she was in the middle of all these boys. She was hanging with them mm. and she was throwing them back and forth. And I was like, damn, I want to do that. You're like, I could be that kind of bitch. I want to do that. And then I was hearing <laughs> the boys music. I was like, oh, hell no. Really? Yeah. That's dope though, because you kind of, you like, you know, there's like pop and female rappers, but to see it like right in front of your face and did it just offer you like assurance that this was not was a totally like, crazy idea? Yes. But mm. uh, I tried telling my mama that oh, uh, yeah. I came home and like told her and she was like, please, <laughs> please, please keep your job. Like, I was like, okay, okay. But at this point, I was modeling streetwear brands, and I was like in a couple of music videos. Okay, so you're starting to dip your toe in. And she didn't like that either. She was like, oh, my God. I was like, Mom, I'm going to be a model. Like, they love me. Like, I got paid $200 for this. Like, she's like. <laughs> so your mom's just expecting that, like, bad things are going to come from this. You're going to get mixed in with weirder and weirder people. And... She's like, I don't want you around it, stuff like that. Like, yeah. even to this day, she's like, you know, worried about me, but she knows that she didn't understand it. Now she understands it, and and she just damn. Sorry, yeah. every, every episode lately we got to <laughs> talk about the fucking squeaky ass floorboards. Sometimes they'll kick if we're being too loud. They'll kick really? the floor. We should be kicking that. I was blasting a song earlier, and I'm like, why is this lady fucking smashing the floor with her high heel right now? And then I'm like, oh yeah, I'm playing the song really loud in the middle of the day. Um. <laughs> But yeah, okay. So you you start to get some degree of confidence with it. Let me let me ask you this. I feel like usually when I see a, a girl rapping, at some point along the way, there was some guy who just gassed her up to get into it. Like gave like just told her that she could do it at some point. Like oftentimes <laughs> an ex boyfriend. That's the the stereotype. I'm not saying that you're gonna fall into that, but was that an early thing? Did you have like a guy who was just trying to like get you into it? Um. Because guys are scumbags. They'll, they'll do anything to get money or whatever. So I had uh, I had dated someone that was an artist, mm. but he never, we had broken up before I had even talked or wanted to do this. You know what I'm saying? He was actually, I don't want to be rude. He was just, he, he was just mediocre. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, and so. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. I'm playing, I'm playing. No, there's no hard feelings or whatever. There may be now. I don't know. But uh, uh, I had a homeboy. He, I knew he had made a song for somebody. Uh -huh. And I went to him and I told him, hey, I want to, I, that's the guy I was telling him. I'm like, hey, I want to record. He's like, I can, I can take you somewhere. I can take you somewhere. Uh, he's like, okay. So we went and I freestyled for them and they were like, they, they hyped me up. But it was never a boyfriend or a friend or anything. It was just, it was just a friend. Um, and... I wanted to be in the studio all the time. And I these people were always partying on drugs mm. like, or whatever they were on. Like, I couldn't get them to the studio with me. Mm. So I started doing it on my own. And then um, I met uh, Joe Fee through the internet. Shout out Joe. Shout out Joe Fee. I met him through Instagram. I dropped a song and he reached out. He said, I want to bring you to L.A. and make some music. I came out here and that's who I made Trapper's Delight with. I made a... Uh, Made a lots of records with Joe. Wow, that's amazing. And um <laughs> And it's been going from yeah, there. Yeah, it just keeps going. That's and I get better each time. Do you feel like was it a challenge at first to like get people to take you serious? Yeah. Because you know, a lot of times people say a white girl rapping. It's like they just don't wanna I honestly, if I see a white girl rapping, I'm like 
I have a friend, Trev, who actually sent me the link. He's like, you got to check out Tay Money. And that was why I checked it out super early on. He's just a random BMX dude. Like, he's not like... Oh, uh, what's his name? Trev Sicklocks. I know. Um, what's the one? Uh, fuck, I'm sorry. Uh, he's also a writer and he'd be on Alfredo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. So a long time ago, a long time ago, I hit him up. Uh, we had followed each other and I'm like... Get, get this to Adam. I need him to fucking drop it. I remember the first time I ever heard about uh, you. I will admit that I'm very out of the loop on stuff. Uh, okay. So when I very first started making music, I did not know what No Jumper was. Okay. I actually didn't get an Instagram or Twitter I, <clears throat> until I had graduated high school. Mm. Um, it, it was like a while. I was like I was so against it. Really? Um, And somebody... Uh, Mel from the Outfit Texas. Yes. He told me, man, no, I was recording a video with Dan Saley, and he said, man, no jumper's going to eat this shit up. And really? I said, what's well, no jumper? He said, uh, started telling me about it. That's how I found out. Now you're fucking everywhere. I don't the, know how I didn't know. What, okay, you know what was really funny about that? And I, I was going to say this and not say the name of the person, but Mel actually came to me at one point and showed me a video, a song they did with you, and I actually kind of wanted to tell him, like, she washed you on that song just to see what he would say, but I didn't want to do that to him, yeah. but I figured I would just say it here. I yeah, thought I thought you kind of got off on that. I don't Thank know. I, I, I Mel felt got like, that Texas sound that yeah. I, I love so much. And but I was very surprised at how well you held it down on that song. I was, like, Thank very you. impressed, yeah. I actually am very, very confident in feature songs. Really? So I make my own music. You know what I'm saying? Like, it takes me longer to make music than the regular person. I swear, if someone's going to go in a studio and make three, five songs a day, I'm going to go in and I'm going to bring you one solid song a day. Okay. That's just how I work. What's, your, what's the process, though? Are you, you, like, writing in your phone for a while? or is Yeah, it... I am. Uh, normally, um, I freestyle with my friend. We just goofy shit back and forth, back and forth. But it works better if I get on the mic and it's more like me doing sounds like ah na na na, mm. and then I go back in and fill that with words. Right. Uh, but I'm picky about what I say, so I won't just say anything. Like if you have like some basic ass like, look at my rocks. Like I'm not saying <laughs> that shit. Like you know what I'm saying? Like BBL busting bitch. Like yeah. Um, I don't know. Everyone but, always brags about the fact that they can like write or that they can not write, and then a lot of times I'm like, bro. You, you need, need to, to write. <laughs> you should be writing. Your shit sucks. <laughs> you know, like a lot of people just don't ever say anything interesting. It's like maybe if you gave yourself a little more time to. They've made it to where there's like this imaginary rule book in this rap life. I don't mind crossing over to pop, whatever I got to do. Uh, but it's like everyone thinks there's this this god these guidelines you have to follow. Like you're supposed to post this. This is how you're supposed to drop this. And, and I'm like. Fuck y'all. Like, I want to do this. Like, I'm going to do this. Like, I want to do this. Even if it doesn't make sense to y'all's order y'all go in. But do you not have people in your life, whether, I don't know, you have you signed anything? Like, uh, I just have management. Okay. But I'm, I'm independent. But are they trying to, like, get you to sort of conform to, like, a certain type of, you know, way no. of putting stuff out? Or are they not that involved in that? Uh, They want, they tell me, Tay, just be you. Right. Tay, just be you. Um. But I know that the goal is to post more and to get, you know what I'm saying? It's like, damn, like sometimes Instagram makes me feel bad. I don't want to be on Instagram. Sometimes I see artists who will sign with a label and then like for me as an adult, it's like, okay, you as a rapper, you just make songs and then you work with the label and then you put out the songs and then you market the songs and you just have to accept that you're part of a machine and that you don't get to like make a song and then put it out the next day. I don't but, really like that. But I've seen artists where they cannot operate like that. Like they, in their mind, they're a creative person and they just cannot wait two weeks for the label to get their shit together. And sometimes like artists, like I've heard young boys 100% like that. Like you cannot fucking control what he's going to put out. He will put his video out and then the label screams rambles to get this shit together i am quick to jump stuff like uh if this doesn't get dropped i'm leaking it on soundcloud i don't give a damn like mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like this is my music and they're gonna fuck with it if it's a hit it's a hit you know what i'm saying he the people decide everything and people like labels and shit think they know what a hit is they may know what sounds good but the stupidest shit goes up you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying like uh, I think Blueface makes great music. The first time I showed Blueface, I was like, "What? I don't understand. I think he makes great music. His shit are bops, but I wouldn't have picked that. Mm. If You know what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't have said, damn, this is a hit. I know, and the label would have never picked, like, Dead Lokes. 
That's like, what I'm saying. They would have never been able to really identify some of that to that extent. But I mean, and imagine if you went in the studio tomorrow and they were, and you were like, like imagine you had a label telling you, you can't put your project out unless you make a hit. Imagine how awkward going in would feel to know that the only way that this song that you're making could be a success is if they agree. And if it uh, hits this certain like momentum that basically you'd end up going in the studio and having to try to like look at another popular song and try to make a song kind of like that. You're trying to rip off something, one, that was already a hit for you, a hit for somebody else. But you can't go into the studio and be like, I need a hit and mm-hmm. I have that problem. I want to go in. I want to make hit. You can't go in and try to make anything. You just have to make it. I mean, that's the weird thing for you is that you could go in the direction of being a rapper's rapper or you could go in the direction of trying to be like a fucking pop star type thing I where you have that, people writing songs for you and i'm not, I, people have made it cool to where uh they don't write their songs uh they freestyle or they refuse to let anyone help them i um see it as even if someone were to write me a song i'm still gonna dissect it and rewrite it in my ways mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying i haven't actually had anyone give me a song and be like here's your song you know what i'm saying um I don't think people say cool shit. When people write shit for me and I look at it, I'm like, that shit sounds lame. Mm. I would never say that. Right. Uh, So I'm going to have to go, you know. But I think two, three heads, four heads are better than one. And the thing with the labels, um, I think that once you get to a certain point, you do need them. But I don't think. I used to think a label was the goal. Right. And then then they would take everything. Now when I see. People, they're miserable. I see it on the internet all the time. They're miserable. Like, why am I, why am I give up what I'm doing if I'm maintaining by myself right now? I've seen people who basically sign the labels, and then that thing I'm describing of like trying to make something that'll really hit kind of sets in, and then it seems like that pretty much is the end of their creativity as a rapper, and like they just don't really. It kills artists. Yeah, it like actually like kills their soul, and I don't think, and like there's some rappers I can think of that they just never really get the swagger back after that. Yeah, it's super sad. There's an energy to your content when you're like recording in your room. I think that I have, a, um, I think that I have my own genre. Like, I think that, like, it's rap, pop, like, rock starish, like, like, there, you can't, you can't name it. You know what I'm saying? The boys are not gonna mosh to it. The girls are gonna be, like, you know, the girls are super lit. But when I look out and I'm performing, I see straight boys singing my lyrics. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to make something that appeals to everybody. But I don't think I can be labeled as a certain... I think I'm one of one. I truly think that. I mean, when we look at Meg, she's like the big success story of this year. And she's kind of got like similar to you, like where you clearly care about being like respected as like an actual rapper and Mm -hmm. making like music for rap fans, which is a thing endears people to her that she like really gives a shit about rapping. I think Megan is really, really, really down to earth. And that's why she's grown like she has. Mm -hmm. I think that she's not trying to be in the headlines and mm. that's what put her in the headlines you know what i'm saying she's one of the ones that doesn't need to get into a fight mm. to be up there yeah i she think does. she's fabulous she avoids it actively the she does it in a way that's like curious like you know like the whiz video and stuff like that you were like huh mm. what is it what's going on but she never actually ever disrespects herself you have to respect megan like she demands it definitely i fuck with it as long as we're kind of touching that how'd you meet cole uh, actually, this is crazy. Speaking of Meg the Stallion, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is crazy. So I um, live in Dallas, and he was at a Chief Keef show, probably about oh boys two two or three years ago. Boys, they love their glow game. And uh, I I happened to pass him in the green room, and I asked him for a picture. And we, I know I That's so cute. I literally never ask anyone for a picture like. Like, if Meg Thee Stallion was here, I would want a pic, but, like, I wouldn't ask her for a pic. I can't believe I asked him for a pic. But what kind of fan were you? You just thought that the channel was dope overall? Yeah, like, I mean, it was just Cole Bennett was there. That's, yeah. what, they, that's what they were saying. They're like, Cole Bennett. And like I told you, I was kind of, like, new on the music scene. I had just I had just did a song. Like, I just wanted to pick with him. Uh, probably on some clout shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, shit. But yeah. this was, like, two or three years ago, and... um well, two or three years ago. Okay, so it was a long ass time. Yeah, uh, and actually, once we crossed paths, 
we never saw or talked ever again. Uh, I dropped Trapper's Delight, and he commented under the video, next up. Wow. And I was like, next up. <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing. Uh, he is literally, like, so awesome. I wonder if he, did he remember that he had met you, though? Yes, he did. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I told him about it. And he also remembered. Um, uh, we, I flew to Chicago and played some music for him and um, the team, and I got to go to the space, like their little headquarters and stuff. Not the new one, though, right? I've been there. but oh, the new yeah, one, yeah. Yeah, but it, this was the old one. Right. And um, I want to see that new one, that basketball court. Oh, my gosh, it's so awesome. <laughs> you don't understand. I told him he needs a water fountain uh, with lemonade, the lemonade right. coming down it. Because we're, we're, like, about to get our next studio space, so we're talking about, like, just putting, like, a basketball hoop outside of shit, and then I saw Gold building that thing. I'm like, Jesus Christ, that's a lot to... That's a lot to go with but it's also indoor and you can keep it clean on a totally yeah. different level we're not gonna put wood flooring outside <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i was like fucking damn the basketball court that's so sick that's so sick yeah it's crazy uh the uh, his office um he has like stairs and like this little i don't even want to spoil it it's awesome <laughs> oh, yeah, he needs the probably... mtv cribs thing going on that there. is interesting that they haven't really unveiled that space officially yet. the studio is insane like music type studio yeah. or like recording interview type studio? No, it's a music studio. Oh, that's sick It's too. called The Happy Place. Wow. That's badass. It's literally badass. So you just flew there to just show the music, but did you have any hunch that there was any kind of crush going on? No, here? no, no. Actually, uh, my management had set it up. Right. Uh, and I flew out there, and when I met him, um, I thought he was a great person. He actually cared to know. I, From what I understand, he wants to know an artist before he ever works with them or anything right when he was talking to me he genuinely cared to know where or what and all that you know what i'm saying uh i left and i didn't think anything would ever happen and i don't and we've talked about it neither did he right because it's kind of a weird position for both of you if yeah. you like each other because yeah. he's in sort of a weird position where he has so much power it is a weird position and you're in sort of a weird position because he's somebody that has so much power like and that's you know how do you just relate to each other <laughs> as regular people you know so that is what we try to do we try to keep it as regular as possible mm. um, and i mean as regular as possible and that's how i like it a lot of people ask why we haven't done anything or mixed business um because we want it as regular as possible yeah i enjoy it so much i like when I was at Rolling Loud, I went to see a little baby performing. It was one of the only times I went in the crowd. And as he was performing, there was three or four couples right in front of me, and they were holding each other, and it would, they were so regular, and, like, I could have teared up. Actually, I did tear up, and I was like, <laughs> it's a little baby. That's so cute. But it, but it was just so regular, and that's what I want. I don't never want what I see. As entertaining as it is on my phone, I don't want what I see on the timeline. Because there's just so many people now that get into a relationship and it's basically like, like you could tell when you see it happening and you're like, holy shit, is this like, do you guys like each other? Or is this a weird cloud operation? I don't know what. And I also think that's another thing with labels like oh, fake relationships and shit. You could never tell me. Have they me. brought that up to you? Who? The, or I guess you don't have a label or whatever, but have you like had anyone like so throw that out to you? Like people who are signed be like, oh, like we should fake date. I actually heard that from somebody. I don't remember when or Lil who Lil Zan or claimed that the label set him up with Noah Cyrus like that. But then I also had the people from the label tell me that they were so mad about him lying about that that they kicked him off the label. Really? That's what they said. Well, whatever to stay in the headlines for them, I guess. I mean, I, I, it's weird because I wouldn't put it past them. Like, uh, I wouldn't put crazy. it past any label. It can't, you can't put anything past anything. If I had an artist that I signed, I wouldn't put that past myself of things that I would recommend that they do. I'm not saying I respect it, but that shit works. Like it shit works. Sometimes when you like just have an image as just like a dude, it's like people need to see you humanized. So they need to see you like relating to someone, even though a lot of times that shit feels fake as fuck. It's very true. Yeah. The shit feels fake, but people fucking eat it up. Yeah. That's what I would like. I would tell a rapper any day, like, go get a girlfriend. Get a girlfriend? People need to if see If a rapper you, gets like, a, a girlfriend, person. the other girls will flock. Interesting. That's weird, right? It is weird. The world's twisted. I don't have time for it. That's why I'm. Is that how it works for you that now that you have a boyfriend, the actually, other video I think directors that... flock? <laughs> I actually think that everyone respects Cole so much. So right. my shit's dry, but I'm not on no Aisha Curry shit either. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, like that shit don't bother me. Like, 
baby, I'm good. But was it ever a decision to like put it out there at all publicly? Because I remember the first time that you guys were just like showing the story together and just saying to my girlfriend, like, Tay Money and Cole Bennett are dating? <laughs> what the fuck? That's crazy. Uh, I think that we were both like, I don't, okay, so here's the thing. I don't ever, he has, he, He's up there. He has a lot of power. Um, and I respect everything about him in his life. I don't ever want him to feel uncomfortable or um, I don't want him to ever feel bad about us because of what somebody else might say. Mm. So whatever we show to the world is it's just what we are. Like uh, We're not out here to – I don't really know where I'm going with this. What I'm trying to say is... You're not putting it out there to entertain. I don't care if he shows me off. Right. But the fact that he does is lovable. Like, it's mm. a, a, a girl's line if she said she do, doesn't care. If, That's probably if, why it fucks with you is because there's so many girls that would be weird as fuck with it. Honestly, I was terrified to take a picture with him. I was mm. like, what is he going to think? You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, I was scared to post him. I was like, what? what is he going to think? I didn't give a damn what the other people thought. I was like, I don't want him to think... But we took it really, we took it really slow. And um, the first time uh, he ever posted me on his page, some people said some things, and I asked him, you know, just just take it down because I don't want him to feel any type of way. I don't because his business is his, it's his baby. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I don't ever want to come and interfere with that at all. Right. But we're very happy and. Um, he treats me like a princess. and That's adorable to yeah. witness. Thanks. You know, just as like, once you've been in a relationship for a while, you sort of look at other people's relationships and you're just like, nice. It's the only thing that I'm 100% certain about in my life. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. who knows? I could go back to doing hair. I won't, but I could. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. who knows what my life has been hold? But the rapper thing is like, it would be weird to turn your back on it now, don't you think? Yeah. So I'm already past like... Being Point of no concern, I, like yeah. I'm regular, but like in a way I'm not regular. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like I'm already past like the I'm like at the almost stage. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. there is no turning back because then y'all gonna say I didn't make it, but it could be because you know I didn't want to continue. But that's not gonna happen. But is but your mentality like I'm going out every fucking oh. day and working my ass off to make it right now, or are you sort of more like I'm gonna just be myself, let this happen in a way? I saw an interview one time of an artist that it was actually Q Money. You know Q Money? Yeah. Uh, I loved his song called Work. Right. And I watched this thing and he said it was a documentary or something about that. They were asking about it. He said, my life changed that day. He said, my, day ch my life changed that day and I had no idea. And every time I shoot a music video and every time I put something out, I say my life changes today because it could it could go like, I feel I'm a superstar. I genuinely believe I'm a superstar. Right. And I feel like at any given time, I'm gone. Like, I'm going straight up. Right. That, I believe that. Because and you can see it in other people's careers. Like, you know, Meg, how long was Meg, like, a, a talented, cute she girl her, before a song hit and all of a sudden she's getting hundreds of thousands of likes on everything she does or whatever, you know? She built her, her fan base. And when she got that record and it went, it went. And it makes sen it made sense because these artists get their one song, and they came out of nowhere. Mm. There was no fan base. So they're kind of sizzling. You know what I'm really, saying? Really, like the biggest thing that you're at risk for is getting too big too quick. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. People get too big before. But the Take Money Army is, like, crazy. Like, I love them so much. Really? I'm so thankful for them. Yeah. Like... I went into the mall in Dallas and I took like 20 pics one day and I thought that I was like, it wasn't like um, Britney Spears, bitch. It was like, wow, like, you know, that's cool. That shit made me feel amazing. Right. Well, you're in a position that's good, too, because the people that like you like you for you. Yeah. It's not like there's not hate mail yet. Like I was just interviewing a dude who was on Rhythm and Flow, the reality show, and he was just like, you know, he's like, yeah, I, I got like 300,000 followers from that show. They don't really listen to my music when I put something new out. Mm -hmm. It's like you went on the show and got a lot more fans, fans technically, but it's like you can have a fan that's going to listen to every song you put out 10 times or you can have a fan that's going to like look at your Instagram photo and not engage with it in many ways, like many different types of fans. So on Instagram, I don't have my likes. 
So I can't see anybody else's likes or mm. views or anything like that. And I actually like that a right. lot. But I can still, and I used to, could really tell when people's fans weren't real. Oh, yeah. And that is such a, not like I'm should attract them, but it's such a turnoff as like to like you as an artist. You know mm. what I'm saying? It's like. You're lame as fuck. But I, sometimes I can't tell if they are just have, like, fake followers or if they just fell off. Like That, too. Because <laughs> sometimes you're looking at a girl's Instagram and you're like, like, did you get bad engagement because you bought followers? Or did you get bad engagement because a lot of people followed you and then decided that you were uninteresting? And I think that the second scenario is almost as bad as the first. Yeah, so pretty much you're in the same fucking bucket. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh yeah, like, you're just either, you either faked it or you're genuinely unpopular now. Basically. But people already gave you a shot. And decided they weren't really into it. That's that's kind of scary. It's like, yeah, it's scary. Or you're so shadow I banned. I can't that handle Instagram. that. I'm not having that shit. That's why I keep staying in the studio, keep putting out. Mm. Like, no. But that's on YouTube at least, and like kind of maybe Instagram to a certain extent, or like Twitter. Like, there's people who are shadow banned. It's like them deciding that they don't really want to show your content to the people who follow you. How do you get unshadow banned? I don't know, but my girlfriend was shadow banned on Instagram, and it just went away after a couple of months. So that means her engagement just went down? It was really hard to find her. You'd have to type in her exact name. And actually on Twitter, it's like that right now for her. And I don't really know why. But if you could type in her full name and it shows you all fake accounts. And then you have to like actually search her men- mentions and click the ad. That's ridiculous. What the fuck happened? How, who gets to pick this shit? And, and it was like for her, like her follower account was going up so fast on Twitter. And then it just fucking slowed to like 20% of what it was. Who knows who's doing this shit? They're pulling fucking... We're, we're all just little puppets in this movie. Basically, yeah. we live in the Hunger Games. Yes. We really do. Do you think you'd do well in that if you had to just murder? No. <laughs> you're, you're too, too kind-hearted. Um, I'm like, are you okay? I'm going to get killed. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that your personality? Are you, are you very, like, mothering type figure? I'm very mother. Like, it's because of my mom. Mm. Like, uh... I'll say something and be like, damn, like that sounds just like my mom or uh, I maybe fuck the sun, suck the fun out of stuff. Like, I don't know, but I'm just always very responsible. I think I'm older, so um, I'm just over my bullshit, Mm -hmm. basically. It's just out of my system. Right. Do you um, think about how you're putting yourself out there? Because it's kind of like as a female rapper, it's like you could put yourself out there. Like we we all know girls are basically like – half naked like instagram models that then decide that they want to become rappers and that's like a, <laughs> you don't want to necessarily fall into that category right yeah no um i what's the question i mean basically just <laughs> like how, do you think a lot about how you put yourself out there in that way because it's like obviously you're a young attractive woman but you don't want to be just uh-huh. that to the people yeah you know? uh i do try to keep it um like G-rated. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. I, I don't... I Take want money work. coming soon to the Disney Channel. Yeah, period. Um, I, I want the kids to be able to listen to me. I have I have uh, nieces and... I have two nieces and a nephew, and they love Tay Money. They think that, like, I'm Cardi B. Mm. And... Uh, That's so cute. It's so cute. Um, and I don't... I want them to be able to almost sing along. I really? mean, my lyrics aren't, like, great, there's cuss words and stuff in them, but it's good enough to get by. The kids love my music. I get a lot of videos of, like, babies, like, bouncing to the music. I like that a lot. So you're not going to do, like, a lean song? No, nah, probably not. I actually don't. Yeah, I don't really like drugs. So. You don't like any of them? Some of them. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, like, that could harm me. Really? Yeah. You smoke weed? Barely. You smoke swishers? Yep. How'd you know? I just feel like I've seen you smoke a Swisher before. Yeah, so I do smoke Swishers. Uh, I actually don't like to smoke weed, but I smoke weed. Does really? that make sense? Why? Because it makes you weird and Yeah, like I don't paranoid, kind of freak out a little bit. I know bit. a lot of people that I think that they don't really like it. They're just addicted to it or used to it, and they keep doing it, and I don't think that they really like it that much. I roll a blunt and hit it like five times and put it out. And then in two hours, I'll pick it up, hit it five more times, put it out. Two hours, Jesus Christ. Yeah. But I, I roll a spliff and I'll, uh, that spliff. spliff, I smoke spliffs now. I got off the woods. I know. But when well, I was, when well, I, hold on, tobacco and weed? Yep. Gross. No? People, I know, people hate, the, the people see me fucking mixing tobacco and weed and they're like, how are you doing that? You're literally weed. crazy. But now me and all my friends do it. We put Fronto in the spliff or just break up tobacco. Who are your friends? 
Well, to be honest, mostly non-rappers. Oh, okay. Because most of my that's that's why I find it weird is a lot of my like BMX slash skater friends smoke spliffs or or papers in fronto or and then like every rapper I know smokes backwards. Do you uh, skateboard? I rode BMX every day for like twenty years, but I've been off it. I think that's I'm gonna make my tri- I'm gonna make my triumphant return. That's awesome. Back in the game. Bam. I'm gonna do a handrail. Probably not. I don't know what that is. <laughs> you know, like a rail downstairs. Okay. Well, you never. Oh, okay. That's you never I, skateboarded. No. That would that, be cool. Honestly, it's a that one's a little scary for me. That'd be, that'd be part of your like gimmick as a rapper, you know. Mm-mm. Hey, money can kick flip. It's like an Instagram <laughs> clip. Pogo stick, hey. I mean, you see it sometimes now. Like I see Puyo just posting Instagram clips all over the place of him just skating. Puyo so nice. I got to uh, meet him for the first time not too long ago. Great guy. Great guy. Great skater. Great skater. <laughs> I watch BMX all the time. Do you really? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got all hyped. Um, what's like your plan right now? Are you just kind of like focused on dropping random videos and stuff? Do you have like a big project that you feel like you're building towards? Uh, I am. So, okay. So it's hard for me to like my own music. Once my music drops, I don't really listen to it. It's like I dropped, I push it, I push it, I push it, but uh, on to the next. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I've been working with Bankroll Got It, and like I love that shit. I love that shit. I cannot wait to drop a EP with Bankroll Got It. Nice. Bankroll Got It, Got It. I gotta listen to him. I didn't yeah. even know. No, he's he's so crazy. Really? Yeah, shit goes hard. He has like Texas, Atlanta, and a Memphis sound all shoved into one. Damn. Some hard shit. If you take like my little popness and put it on that trap beat, it's just. Hard. Damn, that's official. Yeah. So I'm going to drop that. Uh, my merch. about to put it on a website. I have it. And I released it at a... Um... <laughs> no, <laughs> I released I know. it at a show. Um, and it did pretty good. So I'm about to put it online. And then, yeah, music videos. I feel like uh, people need to... In order to fall in love with me, I feel like you need to hear me and see me. It's so much easier to break through, I think, with the music video thing and then, like, have the project be, like, the follow-up. Like, if you had, like, one song that just fucking exploded and went crazy, then it's time to be like, okay, now we must assemble the project around that song. Kinda. Yes, that's the blueprint. Mm. The main thing. It makes sense. That's dope. Thank you. It's very impressive to me that Tay Money could be a female rapper in the game without being like kind of a, like, I don't know. You just seem more like a sincere personality than like the majority. I want to do this right. I want to be the one that did it right. I want to be the one that did it different. And, uh, I want them to be able to, to respect me. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, like beef and shit like that. Shit like makes me uncomfortable. Like, Mm. you know, like I'm not trying to worry about nobody else, but being the realest version of you is, definitely the best long-term plan you know i i want to um i just want to give girls like me a voice because i feel like i am regular so i want to be a voice for the regular girls that's beautiful because they're nice yeah we're nice (laughs) (laughs) i'm like trying to imagine like a dude rapper like saying that like i'm just trying to represent the nice guys i'm just i'm a nice dude shout out to all the nice dudes out there nice gang Hey, I appreciate you coming up here. Thank you so much for having me. I see this all the time. Now I'm on here. Yes. If you like this link, yeah, you can watch the whole thing on nojumper.com. Or if you want to get this little plug, crew neck, have a nice day on purpose. I want that too. Give me that one. I will tell her to put it in the mail Thank ASAP. You. Thank you. There it is. Tay Money, No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes. Like, comment, subscribe. Nojumper.com if you want to support. Nice gang. Jumper.com. Like, comment, subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want one of these, you know where to go. And then no jumper Facebook too. Link is down in the description. Some good stuff going on over there. Appreciate y'all watching this.